Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamek. Berto Bolivia host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Sorry for being late. Two minutes, 30 seconds late. Why? Well, you know, a whole lot of stuff is happening at the our main KPFT station. So I had a few fires to talk about, etc., 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 etc. And of course, that made sure and made me a bit late. So anyhow, we're going to have a great show for you today. Welcome aboard. Bruce MCP, hola, como estas? Bruce Pollard, welcome aboard, my brother. Melanie Keelan, all the way from España, Spain, Barcelona. We are here with AVQ as well. How are you doing, AV- AVQ? Welcome to see everybody. We're have a, hey, we have a great show, man. Let me tell you, Ted Cruz came to Houston, but Houston gave it to Ted Cruz. Well, actually, Ted Cruz, I think, lives some part, some subdivision out here in Houston, but... Suffice it to say, he's not a very liked person. But anyway, let's start with El Senor Rodnan, who says, Biden believes rational Republicans could move on gun control. He's dreaming, of course. There's, there are four categories that Biden can do what would effectively eliminate over 90% of mass shooting incidents. First, raise the gun ownership age from 18 to 21. Exceptions for gun ownership age from, uh, exception for gun ownerships, Military and law enforcement. Second, hold liable any adults that give a weapon to a child or keep an unsecure weapon near a child if that child does damage with the weapon. Exactly. Third, gun confiscation for domestic violence and or animal abuse as those as these two charges in particular are signaling precursors to the vast majority of mass shooters. I agree. Lastly, fourth, gun prohibition for anyone charged with a violent crime and let the politicians decide the duration. We need to start criminalizing criminal behavior among the bad guys with guns before they do great damage as mass shootings are all but never the first incident of their crimes. Makes me wish Democrats would hear me. Also now, let's see how many contrarian conservatives here will stand up for wife beaters and sadists. Hey, you're kind of getting poetic, Mr. Rudnan. I kind of like that, though. I love that. Alistair Waters just joined the house. Welcome aboard, as well did Yvette Avery Herod. How you doing, my dear, beautiful friends? Welcome to Politics Done Right. You guys know how I'm going to start. Let me first tell you guys a little story, right? I am here, I think it was Friday, was it Friday night or Saturday night? I think it was Saturday night. I think it was Saturday. No, it was Friday night. I get a call or a, a signal. You know, we have a particular kind of application we use to communicate. And I got a signal from one of our great activists out there in Houston saying, Egberto, we did a hell of a job today. We went to the meetings. We did all these things. That We went to the rallies. We, 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 we bird dog folk. And we did all these great things, right? But you're not going to believe it, brother. We did something even better. And then I said, what is it? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Then he says, nah, not telling you because you're going to break this story. Let us finish this stuff first because we want, we want you to be the first to put this baby out there. To which I said, okay, no problem. I won't pressure you anymore. Go do your job and then give me a shout. Probably one in the morning or so I get the, I get the text with the video. And he said, take off with this baby and we took off with the baby and what was that baby folks i want to show you guys without further ado this is the work of uh actually this is the work of the one of the board members of of uh, indivisible houston benjamin hernandez under and, and, and as well you know helped out with putting organizing all this stuff together was um daniel cohen who is the president of Indivisible Houston. These guys, I am so proud of them. They went out there and they kicked it. So anyhow, let's go ahead and play that video for you. And then we'll take it on the other side. Afterwards, we'll tell you a little bit about it. Then I did an interview with him yesterday and asked him how you went about it, etc. So let's go ahead and play him and then we'll take it on the other side. All right, one, two, three. Go. Okay. Yeah. We got it. You know, I would encourage you, I gave you a half hour speech today, the iteration that you're 
but because there are actually a lot of flaws. Yeah, but can you can you tell me like I have I have young daughter I have young daughter and I'm young father. Can you tell me why it's more important? Why you can't support stronger gun laws? Because I mean, the laws are different. Because the laws are different. Tell me about that. What about background? Sir, background. sir, sir. Can we do background? Sir? Is it so hard? Alright, you don't want to listen to me. But is that so hard? No, I do. I, I, I'm just saying. No, you actually don't. No, no, no. So, if you look at the laws, the Democrats are going to they wouldn't have stopped them as far do you know this, this shooter waited, waited until the day he sir, was sir. 18? Why is it so hard to support the But the background check would have stopped the shooter. So you know what would have? The bill you can, that you I can make it, you sir, can make it, God we can make it harder for people to get guns in this country. Sir, you know you that. No. You know that, but you stand here. Sir. You stand at the, you stand at the NRA, NRA convention. It is harder. It is harder when there are more guns to you stop gun violence. And hatred. It is not ignorance. You don't know it what you're talking about. We are in this country, and there are guns everywhere, and there are kids dying. There are kids dying. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? My bills that would have stopped you. I told you that it's a good idea. You can just say, listen, this is absolutely different. Why aren't you just supporting stronger than you? Sir, I've introduced all the laws. But why does this keep happening? Why does this keep happening? Why? Hey, 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 okay, 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 he's just talking. Why does this keep happening? Sir, if you don't in his face, I'm... And why did you come sir, here sir, to the convention to, to take blood money? You need to back up. Why? When 19 children died, 19 children died. And it's on your hands. That is on your hands. That through that's on your hands. Okay, folks, let's let's first get something straight. That is Republican orthodoxy, the orthodoxy of death, the orthodoxy of whatever it takes. We don't believe in, 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 in caring. We don't believe in any. That's their orthodoxy, okay? And that is what uh, Benjamin Hernandez was confronting him with. Look, the guy just, the guy waited till he turned 18. He doesn't have yet a completely matured mind. He turned 18. All we're asking why you, the guy can't drink at 18 legally, but he can own an AR-15 at 18 years old and he buys it as soon as he turns 18 in May and then goes kill as soon as he turns 18. Think about that. And Ted Cruz could not see in his heart that just passing laws that prevent guns from being sold like they were hotcakes would somehow solve the problem. But anyhow, I then spoke to um, Benjamin Hernandez. I, 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 Daniel went ahead and made sure that we got connected to go ahead and get this stuff done. I want you to listen to the interview that we did. We did that. Well, let me make sure that, that I don't have anything else to talk about. Okay, I got, got you guys covered. Go ahead and listen to this interview. I think you're going to find it quite interesting. I am very impressed with uh, Benjamin Hernandez because he shows that he understands the concepts. Check this out, then we'll take it on the other side. Welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis. Today, I have the honor to be with a board member of Indivisible Houston and a not only local, but now a national hero, Benjamin Hernandez. Benjamin Hernandez, welcome to Politics Done Right. How are you doing today, my friend? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing great. And let me tell you, when I got notion from uh, that, that, that this stuff went down from, uh, <laughs> I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. I, I, here's a message I got. Wait for the video. You are going to love it. We are cleaning it up. The work got done. And that came from Daniel Cohen, president of uh, Indivisible Houston, and you're a board member of Indivisible Houston, and you got it done. I tell you what, yeah. you actually did something to Ted Cruz that many a people tried, and they were never as successful as you were. So first of all, lay out exactly what happened in that, uh, in that eatery for me. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, but I think I, I also want to say, man, it, it had to have been fate. 
because, um, you know, a couple, you know, earlier this week, uh, Beto, you know, had, uh, you know, when he confronted Governor Abbott, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wrote something on Twitter, like, you know, this is how we have to confront all these hypocrites, right? Mm -hmm. And um, then on Wednesday night, Daniel is such good people, you know, with Indivisible Houston, the, the president and co-founder there of Indivisible. He called me Wednesday night and he's like, hey, I got this idea. And I was like, what? I mean, it was like 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, I got these cutouts of Ted Cruz. Let's go drop him off in front of the convention center right on his chest. You know, I uh, uh, murdered uh, teachers and children, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's go. So like, we're really be busy people, man. We're busy as hell. Mm -hmm. But there we are Thursday morning outside the convention center at 8 a.m. just putting this up, right? And then on Friday, um, you know, um, you know, our team volunteered to do the live streaming for the protest, for the entire protest and put right. it on the internet, right? And so I'd been in this space of like, this is the most important thing happening, you know, in, in, in this week and I needed to be involved. And so, you know, we were done, went home, took a shower and, uh, you know, went out for sushi and with my wife. And so we're having there, we're almost wrapping up. And then I look over and then I see... Ted Cruz and I'm like this effer right like sorry I, like I don't know if you cuss or not here but yeah. anyway it uh it, like it just like came out like I tell people I don't really cuss but it was just like this you know like mm -hmm. I'm trying to have sushi and here you are just walking in and to me it was clear I was like okay like I'm in this space you know to me it's like everything aligned and I'm here and I have to do something right right because like I told you, just the context of the week. And like, it's real easy to tweet, right? And say something like, like Beto did, we got to confront all these people. But then when Ted Cruz walks into the room, it gets real, really mm -hmm. fast, right? And for me, it was like, I mean, there was just not, not a question of something had to be done, right? And I was there and I was like, I'm going to do this. Now, when, uh, how, what happened? You saw him walk in. He sat down at a table with his family, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he was with a big party, you know, um, family, like, I don't know, I, I don't know who they are. You know, I definitely recognize his wife. Um, I, I don't know much about his children, so I don't know if the, the, they were at the table or not, but I know mm -hmm. it was at least a party of eight people that were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, did you just approach the table or what did you do? Yeah, so like I, I knew something had to be done, right? And this is what I what I love about like our our, our network, right? Because I texted our, our group here, uh, you know, the Indivisible, our, our board members, and I was like, "Hey, you're not gonna believe this. Ted Cruz is here. Like, like, give me your thoughts." Mm -hmm. Because like to me, like you know, we've been working on this collective action for, for years now, right? And and I'm like, how unlucky do you have to be, Ted Cruz, right? Like. You know, we're a big city, right? Like the city of Houston proper is 2 million plus, the mm -hmm. metro area of over 6 million people. And I'm like, to find yourself in a restaurant where there is a board member of Indivisible, where our goal is to hold elected officials accountable, right? I'm like, how unlucky do you have to be? So anyways, I texted them and I got some ideas back, but it was ultimately sort of like, it was like, we got to go confront them and ask them the questions, right? Ask them the hard questions. And so... You know, um, I'm figuring out like how to do this. And I was like, well, I'm just going to go up and just mm -hmm. ask to take a picture, right? Because I've seen that before. So that's what I'm going to do. But here's the interesting thing is like, I, um, I was, I was, I was trying to be like extra sly about it because I'm like, surely this guy's heard this before. So the way I walked up to him and I was like, excuse me, Senator, like, Hey, not now when you're finished with mm -hmm. your dinner. Can I get a picture with you? I was like, no, no, not now finish your dinner. Cause they had just served them. Right. And, and he's like, you know, because I thought if I go that route, then he, you know, he'd just be like even more unsuspecting. Right. Dinner kind of thing. That guy was like, no, let's do this now. And I was like, oh, let's, okay, let's do this now. So I called my wife over who, who was ready and, and, and she was going to, you know, take, take the video, this whole thing. Uh huh. Now, uh, she did a great video and I'm going to play the video in a little bit. But I mean, the, the video was great because it just looked like a, a, a two fans of Ted Cruz wanting to get a video with him and he was eating it up. The guy is a colossal narcissist. And uh, not only a narcissist, but I actually think he believes in his own evil that it's not. And so it was amazing watching how he was. He was actually very into you that you were so into him. So what happened after that? 
Yeah, I mean, like I could not wait to 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 take that smile off my face for that 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 fake picture, right? Because as you saw, my friend told me, "Man, you went from zero to sixty real quick." I was like, "Yeah," because I'm like, I got to do this picture so I can get to him. And here's the interesting thing, right? It's like that's the thing with Ted Cruz and 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 these politicians, right? Who who shield themselves from constituents, right? Mm -hmm. They're not the type of people, try calling his office, right? You're going to get his voicemail. You're mm -hmm. try making an appointment. You know, you're not going to get one. Um, they're not the type of people that hold town halls. So what we got to do is we got to revert to these tactics of like, hey, I want to take a picture of you so I can get close to you and ask you these questions, right? So the moment we were done with that picture, like I, um, you know, I just turned to him and I just went in and I was like, hey, why is it so hard to, con uh, you know, to support background checks? And the reason to me, I started with that is because we very likely have different views on what we need to do with guns in this country. Right. But I am like, surely we can start with common ground, which the vast majority of Americans support, right, with just background checks. And so that's where I started, right? And so immediately at some point he gets wind of like, like, okay, We're like, some, some, uh, like I mean, not, that he was not expecting that. He, you can see he glances down at the camera and he's like, okay. All right, it's going to be one of these. Um, and so we just didn't get, like, I'm trying to ask him this question to which he has no answers. He goes to his canned response, which right. is, like, wow, the Democrats, the proposals, the Democrats. And I'm like, stop talking to me, man, about the proposals mm -hmm. of the Democrats. I want to know why the hell you can't get behind background checks. It is so simple, right? So, yeah, that, that's we moved into that part real quick. You know, some of the people that I, I, I placed the video on, on my YouTube for Politics Done Right and Egberto on the Run, and it, it turned out that some of the people, it, it's evident that they were right-wingers, like, you're not giving him a chance to talk. And when I saw some of the comments, I finally said, at last, at last, we are not the ones that are taken. At last, we are the ones that are given and saying, let me tell you, we are going to force you not to bloviate. We are going to force you not to put out a can answer because many times what they do is they are using your question to give the, ad, to give the, the answer that they want, to give the direction that they want people to actually hear on that conversation. And you never gave him a chance to do that. And that was what was so perfect about the way you approached uh, Ted Cruz. Those people who like or think they like Ted Cruz would look at that and say, well, give him a chance to talk. You never allowed him to say what you weren't going to, the fallacies that he normally puts out there. Finish that for yeah. me. Yeah, because you know, at some moment he's like, well, let me speak. And I was like, okay, we'll speak. But when I see he's just going into these things, like I don't have time for that, right? Like there, there are people, we are in this moment, right? Because there are families who just lost their kids and the two teachers, right? Like, and right. so you're going to sit here and try to give me this can't, I don't have time for that, right? And I had not sort of analyzed it until you're saying that, but to me, it just like, it was never a question. I mean, I was really trying to see, like, this wasn't a gotcha thing. I was just like, to me, I was like, hey, I want to know this, right? I, like, tell me where you are on this and why this is so hard. It exactly. wasn't a gotcha. And so when I'm like, wait, you're trying to give me that thing, that response, that canned response that I heard earlier in the mm -hmm. week from you, from Sky News that you gave it to that British reporter. Like, that's the same thing you're trying to give me. Right. You're uptown sushi. I'm not taking it because I'm like, that's not what I'm about. I want an answer that it doesn't seem to compute why the hell you can't get behind something so exactly. basic. Exactly. Exactly. One of the other things, Benjamin, that I, that I really mm -hmm. am, I'm hoping all of us in mm -hmm. the movement start to do is right now we saw those murders and those murders are a direct result of the policies of Republicans, Ted Cruz, uh, Greg Abbott, mm -hmm. Dan Patrick, and all the cabal in Washington. You and I know that. But those deaths that we saw in, in, in uh, Uvalde, those deaths that we saw in Buffalo, those deaths that we saw at Sandy Hook, those are physical deaths we can see. We can see flesh and blood on the ground. The deaths that we don't see are more profound and larger. Texas not accepting the Medicaid expansion to Affordable Care Act, that killed a lot of people. We don't see the flesh and blood on the ground. Not giving parents the ability 
to find suitable locations for their kids when they go to work, create latchkey kids that create the problems that have kids without supervision and further debts. I want us to expand the, the, the GOP killing to not just the flesh and blood we see on the ground, mm -hmm. but further. What's your thoughts on that? You know, I, I don't know what your you know, uh, religious background is, but, but I'll tell you, you know, as a Christian to me, one thing that just irks me so much, incenses me about this whole situation is because you have this political party, Republicans talking about upholding life and life this and life that, but everything that they do in practice is against life, right? Like you talked about healthcare, whether it's Medicaid or, or supporting people who need it or supporting children, right? And everything that they, or guns in this case, right? So everything that they are doing is against life. And so to me, when I see it, you're absolutely right. And I think we have to begin to call them out on that because there is a hypocrisy in that, in that they uphold life and they say, these are the things we're doing, we, you know, the, uh, on abortion, right? The classic case, right? Like they are protecting the unborn child and yet they are ignoring everything else. And to me, that's something that has to begin to be called out. And I think we have to have honest conversations because people are dying every day. I'm going to take this a step further. One of the big disappointments to me that has happened in, 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 in sort of the, you know, in, in, in these past couple of years is if Republicans, you know, they're always talking about God and, 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 and their Christianity and their faith, right? The vast majority of them, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's everybody Exceptions, in the Republican yeah. party. Right, right. But they uphold these values. And I'm like, you know, we just went through a worldwide pandemic. Y'all should have been the first ones. If you care about life so much, y'all should have been the first one. They're like, we need to get out of here and get vaxxed. We need to do this for others because our faith, you know, uh, requires that we be good to people, right? And to me, when I'm looking at them, like, but y'all are against the most basic things that will help life, you know, that, that will make life, life better for people. I'm like, who the hell are you? You know, like, I don't know what you're about. And I think that's one of the things that we've seen over the past couple of years. We've seen this unmasking of Republicans and really who they are, right? They say they are one thing, but in reality, they're another. I am so happy that, I, that I'm here interviewing you, Benjamin. And let me tell you why, because you get it, because the group that you represent get it. And that is what we have to call that a few days ago. I interviewed Andrew Schmuckler. He is somebody who ran for office as a fairly progressive Democrat in Virginia. And he said one of the problems with so many progressives, with so many Democrats, is the inability to call things the way they really are. The inability to look at what Republicans are doing and articulate it to people that what they are doing is utter evil. And he said the word evil. You know, we, car we cater it in words like, they're not doing what's right, they're being hypocrites, etc. Some of this, people die, people get hurt, people get maimed. This is utter evil. And when I heard the way you expressed it, I said, you know what, we are in good hands with folks like you leading the movement. I, one of the things that I always ask at the end of my interviews is, what would you have liked me to ask you that I didn't, or what would you like to add to this particular discussion? I think we have to move away from from this, uh, you know, this is this veil of civility, right? I think we have to learn to confront our elected officials and leaders, especially when they are hiding from us. And I think there's two levels to that. One, confronting them, whether it's on the street, whether it's a restaurant, like like I had to do movie theater, it doesn't matter because if they're hiding from us, I think we have to confront them if they're not creating the space for us to ask questions and get answers. Because at the end of the day, we've heard the thing, right? They work for us. So if they work for us, why are they hiding from us? And then the second thing I would say is that that's for them. That is reserved for them. I would say for our community and the people around us, I think we have to engage in meaningful conversations because the people that are dividing us are these elected officials, right? Those people we have to confront and be shameless about confronting them and get the courage to confront them. But when we look at our communities and our neighborhoods, you know, for the vast majority of them, we're not like that. We can engage in conversation. I bet like something 
like like as background checks, we would find agreement with our neighbors no matter where they are mm-hmm. on, on, on the political aisle. And so to me, it's those things hand in hand. I would encourage other folks, if you, you take anything away from this, is go and confront your elected officials and with your community, engage them in those conversations. You know, but we cannot back down because we've been doing that for far too long and it's got us to where we're at now. You know, they always say, right, the 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 time is not not now for this. Well, it's now, it's now, and we're making the space. That's what I'm asking others, make the space for those conversations when they don't make it for us. Benjamin Hernandez, board member of Indivisible Houston and our latest hero to confront Ted Cruz, someone who's there damaging us all. Thank you so kindly, Benjamin, for having been on Politics and Right. All right, take care, man, thank you. We spend a lot of time. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. That that I I, I was really excited to speak to Benjamin uh, Hernandez because he did what we all like to do: make these guys account for their inner evil. Sue Tempen, thank you so kindly for becoming our latest member of the PDR Posse. Thank you so kindly. Uh, if you notice, you're up on the screen because you are our latest member, so you're on the screen. Why don't some of you join, Sue? Go ahead and click that join button. And by the way, we have a whole lot of listeners, but only seven likes, I mean, seven uh, thumbs up. Folks, all of you that are listening right now, all of you, please, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Let this algorithm work. So please go ahead and give us that thumbs up. I know you can. I know you can because you have before. Oh, we crashed. No, we didn't. We didn't crash. I thought we crashed. We do have a pending crash that I held back. Let's hope I can continue to hold that back. Anyway, folks, thank you so kindly for being here. Let's go ahead and get to some of your messages. Alistair Waters, uh, actually, before I get to Alistair, I think I I have John Smith. Uh, uh, Bruce says, hold tight your guns, not your children. John Smith says, Cruz is right. There were lots of laws the shooter broke. More laws wouldn't have stopped him either. If we had a law that said, you could you you can only buy a gun at the age that you can drink. If we had a law that said that you couldn't buy that number of ammunition, if we had a law that said you couldn't use weapons of war, you can't sell weapons of war. I don't think there would be a problem, folks. Uh, Pedro Siosam MacGriana, he's a coward. Wouldn't even defend his wife. That's an interesting name, Padre Siosam. Macriana, welcome aboard Politics and Right. I don't think I've seen you here before. All right, let's see what else we have. Uh, B Alpha, I mean, that's Bruce says he probably owns stock in Winchester or Colt firearms, probably. John Smith says Gilberto is missing the point that this shooter was showing a lot of signs of mental illness. So what? You know what is funny? They're trying to make the conversation a mental illness conversation. This is the same cabal. This is the same cabal of killers that decided they would not accept the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act, which would have given aid to people with mental problems. So they're saying, oh, it's a mental problem and we're going to take care of it, but we're not going to give you any money to take care of it, even though Texans have already paid the money to take care of it. These guys are the biggest group. They are a failure. They are liars and they care nothing about humanity. Don't fall for uh, how they try. You know, they're great at messaging. I'm not going to argue with that. They message better than anybody else. They can turn something that stink as hell into some new form of perfume that needs maturity. I mean, they, they can do all kinds of things with messaging. But they're thugs. They're thieves. They're killers. And I'm not talking about the person who killed those 19 kids. I'm talking about the Republican politicians who created the policies that allowed him to kill all those kids. And I don't take any of this back. We ought to stop, as as Brother Hernandez just said there, we have to stop, we have to remove the veil of civility. We need to be civil, but remove that veil of civility that prevents us from telling the truth to those killers. We've got to. Otherwise, more children die. More people get killed. We have to let America know what they're up about. Daniel says, 
is are uh, somebody who kills 19 kids crazy? Yeah, they're, I think they're, they're some kind of crazy or evil or whatever, but that doesn't matter. The gun was given to him by, the, who gave this guy, who gave this 18-year-old that gun? Who gave that 18-year-old that gun? Dan Patrick gave him that gun, okay? Dan Patrick and Greg Abbott gave that 18-year-old that gun to do the killing. So they are responsible. They passed the laws that allows that kid to get that gun and effect mass slaughter. Don't you forget it. And folks, remember to tell people that whenever they're bloviating, remember causation, causation, causation. Absent those changes in laws by the by the Texas the Texas criminals that call themselves politicians in in uh, Austin, that would not have occurred. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Alistair Water says, Bridge MCT, thanks for the link. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson qualifies as a prohibited person, yet there is no enforcement. There you go. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, bit, bit, but Bridge MCP says, I can't put anything on the screen right now because I'm concerned that we have a minor crash that has already occurred and I don't want to create a major crash. Uh, thank you, Sue Tuman, for your contribution as the latest member of the PDR Posse on YouTube. Please, folks, why don't you follow her lead and become a part of our PDR Posse? What's that on the screen? There we go. All right, continuing, continuing, continuing. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have uh, Ben, Bridge MCP thinks that Ben did this so smoothly. I agree with you, Bridge. He's, he's very good at what he does. Daniel Edos is replying to Bridge MCP. Uh, well, before that, Michael Rodden says, Maywood, then we have a serious problem. The United States has over 20 million AR-15 style rifles. And that, that's, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It was all business. Multiply that by a, a couple hundred dollars and you see the kind of money we're talking about why these criminals continue to work for the NRA because it's a very lucrative business. Very lucrative business. Uh, Ledo says, that uh, then why are we not talking about mental illness? We are. You guys aren't. You guys only bring it up as a subject. When it comes to creating the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act that will pay for it, you balk. You say no. So you left a lot of people in Texas without health care, including without mental care. You can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. Democrats will use any tragedy to forward their agenda. No, this isn't our doing. This is y'all's doing. This are, these are Republicans who put guns in the hands of people who shouldn't have guns. And not only did they put the guns in the hands of people who shouldn't have guns, they put the guns that murder human beings like they were. These are not guns. These are weapons of war. Don't forget it. All right, Michael Rodney says, can someone repeat this to Daniel? Republicans won't pass gun control to address mental illness any more than they will pass universal health care coverage that addresses mental health care in the first place. Exactly. That's what I was alluding to, sir. Uh, Bree says, and what is their agenda? Obviously not taking guns away. No, it's not. All right, let's see what else we have to say here. Egberto, can you tell me the name of that progressive who called Republicans evil? His name is a guy that I interviewed here called Andrew Schmuckler. Just look up Andrew Schmuckler and you'll find the interview that I did with him. And by the way, I have a C I'm doing a series with Andy Schmuckler. You know, we get into some good discussion and um, he will be on. I tell you what, while I'm on the road, I will be playing to uh, I'll be playing. I think uh, Tim Danahy, also uh, Schmuckler and also a uh, er, uh, 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 what is his name? Uh, for my good, my good buddy. Uh, uh, what is? Oh, oh, wow! You know when you get when you hit a blank, right? Uh, Extreme Arturo, Extreme Arturo. I'll be playing Extreme Arturo as well. So we have while I'm on the road, we have coverage, and I'll probably try to check in from the phone while Roberto drives, and I'll be have we'll have it play live, and I'll probably try to check it. We'll see how it works out. We'll see if we can get it done. Never tried it before, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. He's great and young. Yes, he's young, and that's what's great. We need youngsters in here moving the progressive message forward. All right. Maywood says the Republicans don't really have any agenda except maybe raise taxes on the poor, working and middle class people, and lower taxes. I agree with you wholeheartedly. 
Eric Hayes says, if green is so good and dependable, why is California needing nuclear power? California asked the Biden administration whether it last nuclear plant could qualify for federal funds as it grapples with potential electricity shortfalls. Uh, I think you answered your own question. Until you build up the green energy, you have to do something for electricity. It's not going to happen overnight, is it? Come on, Eric. Don't be silly, my dear brother. You know better than that. All right, let's see. Michael Rodden says, Eric Hayes, the debts of children is an acceptable price for your so-called freedom. You don't see what's wrong with that thinking. See, there is no saving the climate. There is more Russia oil exports than ever, and I would freaking bet not near as safe in the rust bucket ships they use as well as technology. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to say. You're trying to say because Russia is doing bad things, we need to just continue doing bad things as well. Come on. General Savage says, if a few of those children would have fought back, they would have neutralized the attacker. We need or need to train the children to be kickboxers like Sesh, Seshai and Bukwal. Bukwal, Bukwal. I am not a kickboxer, so I don't know those names. Okay, so if I pronounce it wrong, forgive me. Uh, let's see. ABQ says, General Savage, you want to militarize children, turn children into soldiers? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I think General Savage was being funny. I think General Savage is a good progressive. I think he's a good progressive. Anyhow, keep sending me those messages, but it's time for me to say the following. I'm Alberto Willis, as host of Politics Done Right, a progressive radio media show on Pacifica Network's KPFT 90.1 FM Houston that engages all ideologies. I found that our political angst isn't mostly ideological. There is a well-designed effort by many in power to control us. If we are at each other's throats, we are less likely to demand our economic and local wishes. In that light, I wrote three books. I wrote the first one titled, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom to Describe the Entire Economy in a Manner We Can All Understand. It highlights why it was designed to pill for most as it empowers a few, the chosen. The second book, titled, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, Take It to the Next Level. After understanding how the system pilfers, it is incumbent that we can speak to our peers to empower a change. The third book, How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the Economy from Those Who Rigged It, gives us a place to land. After learning about our economy that is dysfunctional for most and learning how to engage the other side, we point out what would make an economy that works for all. Each book stands on its own, but together they provide the full picture. Please consider getting one or more. You will undoubtedly learn, be entertained, and help us continue the mission with our blogs, articles, videos, and books. I'm Igberto Willis as host of Politics. Okay, folks, I just added that link for the books into the feed. Please consider, uh, please consider, 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 consider going ahead and get in that book. Everything keeps cutting in and out. Does anybody else experience that? I don't. Let me know if there's something that somebody else experienced that I haven't seen that. Anyhow, uh, I, I put the link for the books in there, but here is the link. Please consider supporting us in the several different manners we have. For PayPal, go to politicsandright.com slash PayPal, politicsandright.com. Oh, where is that link? Where is my link? There is my link, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. You can also support us on Patreon, politicsandright.com slash Patreon, politicsandright.com slash Patreon. And don't forget, if those of you who are not on YouTube but would like to support us on YouTube, consider going to politicsandright.com slash YouTube, politicsandright.com slash YouTube. Remember, our store has a whole lot of new products in there now. Please go to our store. Anything that you buy at our store, help keep moving the progressive message forward. politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. And, of course, there is the all-encompassing politicsandright.com slash support, which gives you all the different forms in which you can support us. I, I don't know. I think I told you guys that I am now uh, moving, not moving, but I am also cross-blogging at Medium. Uh, no advertising or anything would be found on Medium. So I, you know, for those of you who like, I hate all those ads on your, your thing, right? You can now go ahead and go to Medium and see all our articles that are there. And we write several articles there a day. Now, uh, you, you, can, it, you can read a certain amount of articles free. I don't remember how many. Uh, but 
we also have they also have a very inexpensive medium membership that people may want to consider getting and you don't only get a chance to read all my material which is very voluminous and also there are, uh you know there are, i i think i released a couple of uh, pieces of my book on medium as well uh you can also read everybody else's writings and there are some damn good writers on medium well my daughter is also at medium i'm at medium and other very good writers are at medium so check it out at medium.egbertowilis.com slash membership and i just put that link in there as well anyhow folks um let, let let's continue with the, the notes and the questions and so forth all right, Eric Hayes, what the heck are you talking about, Eric? No one, and certainly not the government, is forcing less refinery production or trying to restrict any production. Maybe make it cleaner so they are poisoning children and neighbors. And, and that's what I don't understand with Eric, right? For Eric, it is just drill, 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 baby, drill, baby, drill, and just refine, 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 refine. It doesn't matter that you throw dioxin into the air, into the ground, everywhere else. It doesn't matter that the cancers that these people get are cancers caused by the consumption or refining of these petrocarbons. It doesn't matter to them, right? Even though it's going to give these people cancer, emphysema, and all these other diseases, right? The question is, why don't we have these oil companies who infect people with these diseases by the byproducts that they have? Maybe if they were paying for it, then they will see the need to keep it cleaner and things better, right? But they're not doing that. They are not doing that and that is what we have to work on so i uh, thank you for pointing that out very well may wood uh, michael said someone passes along to eric uh i think somebody part of the pattern with conservatives first you deny that climate change is happening then you delay any action that might prevent the outcomes then you say we should do nothing because it is too hard to make a difference always on the wrong side i mean that's listen this is something we've known for a long time, and, and it, they, they, the, the, the conservative methodology has been for decades one of the things that have held back this country for so long. It's the reason why, it, for the masses, our technology is real, even our technology is behind. Let me tell you a little funny thing, right? I remember just before my father died, we went home that we had a family reunion in Panama. And it was kind of interesting, right? Because in Panama, the internet was super fast. I'm here in Kingwood. All I could get then was DSL, right? That was fast then. Go to Panama, my third, my third world supposed banana republic. I could talk to people throughout the world and the United States faster than Panama faster in Panama than I could in Houston, Texas at that time. I couldn't believe it. Then there was a time that I had to go back where, uh, these were the days that I used to do a lot of eye reports for CNN. We, you know, you'd, you know we'd, we'd do, uh, you know, I was filing on average about three or four eye reports uh, that would actually make it on air, about three to four eye reports uh, uh, um, a week. And, I remember it was like I went home and I was concerned because I had to take care of my father who was having surgery. So I went home for a week to Panama and I was concerned about the Internet. I was going to be in Cologne most of the time. Cologne is the second largest city, the city that they least take care of because of that's another subject. Anyhow, I am in his apartment on his Internet, realizing that my dad had much faster Internet than I did. Why is that? The way our economic system work with depreciations and all that kind of stuff, and because of laws that don't force certain changes, we could be working with ancient equipment because. So while we pat ourselves on the back, we are the best thing, we are exceptional, we should actually start taking a look at who, where, and why we are. We would get quite a bit of a surprise you know, I don't know how many of you have gone to China or, or these other places, but when you go to their airports, you know, I went to uh, Xi'an. Even, well, Xi'an at the time wasn't all that good, but Hong Kong and all these other airports, you know, 
it, it is comical the way it makes Kennedy look or it, these other airports. Now, Houston is kind of doing some improvements on its airport that started bringing it up into the second tier of airports. But we need to learn that this crap that Republicans like to teach and, and this crap about not paying your taxes so that you have a vibrant public sector, it's for the birds. Carl Cox says, better late than never. Where were you, Carl? Carl, why are you late? Kidding, buddy. Conservatives deny guns are dangerous, even though innocent people are killed all the time, especially children. They want to have tons of weapons to overthrow democracy. I kind of believe that's the whole gist of the thing. So it's not, a, but you know, it's not the overthrow of democracy as people think it. What they want to do is have people fearing. They want people to fear upholding their own personal democracy. Let me give an example. They want to be able to fear people into not voting. I don't want to go to the vote because we're going to have poll watchers with AR-15s. Okay? So here's how the Republicans work, right? We go ahead and tell everybody they can be armed. Everybody can be armed. And then that old, all these old people and, and scary people that normally vote Democratic, they fear because they're not the kinds that carry AR-15s or want any trouble. So they hear that they're going to be poll watchers with AR-15s and they just don't show up to vote. And what is the second blessing that they do? Oh, we're going to eliminate mail-in voting where we can. And we're going to eliminate drop boxes. We want those people, if you want to vote, you're going to have to go to that polling location. And many are going to be scared to go to that polling location because those crazy conservatives are going to be out there with AR-15s. You see? The idea, folks, is not that they intend for their people to use these guns, although some of them will. The idea is to put the fear into those who would vote, who, who pretty much acquiesce to losing their democracy. They don't officially lose it. They just give the democracy to others to control. That's what they're doing. And that is what... I, I spoke to a, a, a leader in the party where I said, when you have, in, in, like in Harris County, the big problem is that all these people are saying, we, we are what, have, hiring, they're going to pay. The Republican Party in, in Harris County wants to pay poll watchers. And of course, you can go with a gun to these places, right? And they want everybody to know that. To which I told a part of our party, I said, let me tell you guys something. This is what they're doing. They want to get Democratic voters or Republican voters who would ordinary vote for Democrats. They want to get them scared and not vote at all. And then the job would have been done. And I said, the response from the party must be, you have a poll watcher, we'll, we'll up you. This is our county with a majority of people that are democratic and you're trying to take it away with guns, we are gonna come ready. And then you tell, advertise in your community, guys, you have to come to vote. We will be there to protect you. There will be nothing happening because we will be there to protect you. But if you just let it go into the air, people are gonna make up their own minds and say, I'm not gonna vote, it's gonna be trouble. You have to be actively telling them what Republicans are trying to do to create minority rule and then mitigate it by having your own force ready to go. That is what we have to do. I have some more videos, but I don't have the time to do it. So let me just go to some more questions. Uh, let's see. Michael Rodden says, between 2017 and 18, the average download speed of broadband and internet in Panama nearly tripled, going from a recorded 2.3 megabits per second as of 2017 to approximately 7.05 MPS, the study period from June 2017 to 2018. There you go. Tell you what happened. You know, <laughs> I love what my brother did there. He went to say, let me make sure Egberto is talking about the Panama I'm talking about. Yeah, that is what happened in Panama. Panama, you know, it's a great internet. And one of, by the way, one of the cables, I think one of the inter, uh, I think one of the underground fiber optic cables is destination is Panama. And then it, it, it branches out. You can look that up. Bruce Paul Egberto, comparing U.S. versus Panama internet speeds. 
we are more than twice as fast as of 2017. The average internet connection speed in the United States was 18.75. That is true. Let me give a qualifier to that, okay? There are various pockets throughout this country. And for a long time, it was Kingwood as well. They only have one carrier, one cable carrier, one DSL carrier, or whatever. And you have to take whatever they have to offer. So you take whatever they have to offer, or you go with the satellite, which is a lot slower. So while that is in the aggregate, on for both Panama, likely, and the United States, there are pockets that, are, that I can guarantee you are still using very old technology. Bruce Pollard says, I told you it had to do with local carrier we had, and now it connects to the internet. There you go. Uh, Bruce, what are you using? Are you using the new, uh, what is it called? In, uh, there's a new carrier in Texas, in Kingwood. Touche. What? I forgot the name. Have you tried it? Okay, let's see. Replying to Bruce Pollard, most definitely, as we in the U.S. have a major problem with ISPs, established regional monopolies, and duopolies, they jack up the prices. Yes, they do. Egberto, exactly. Egberto, can you read this out? Most definitely, as we in the U.S. have a major problem with ISPs, uh, establishing regional monopolies and duopolies, then jacking up the price. Yes, we do. Comcast Direct. Okay, how fast are you, Bruce? I imagine you are probably close to a gigabyte if you're using Comcast. I think they have the gigabyte speed. If I recall correctly. All right, what else we got here? Replying to Eric Hayes. Maywood, is it? It's you that wants. No, this is Eric Hayes talking. Uh, it's you that wants it all changed, no matter what sacrifice the lower and middle class. Open your eyes. It is the administration that says it in its own word, this will be painful to you. And so that means the policy pushes. No, no. Okay, let's correct it. It does not have to be painful. We choose to make it painful. We could take the money away from the oil company. It is our oil. Pay them for mining it. Pay them for tax us. That's right, tax us. Pay them for mining it. Pay them a little stipend. But the oil belongs to we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. You see, we have been taught to believe finders, keepers, as if they generated the oil. They didn't. Come on, people. Let's start getting some... Let's start getting some oomph, right? Let's start defending who we are. Bridge says, I have half a gig. You go, girl. Uh, and let's see, Eric says, tack us, and it's not up yet, Egberto. Actually, I have a lot of friends who already have it. Uh, Bruce says, one gig to Comcast, uh, 700 meg to the internet, sometimes symmetric. Oh, you get symmetric sometimes. That's good. Yeah, uh, in Kingwood, I have... Uh, one of the cable companies, and I have, it's, it's asymmetric. It's one gig down, and I think it is 300 or 500 gig up, something like that. So it's asymmetric. Eric says, nope, you don't have to be painful. Say greed is inflationary. It's just fundamentally wrong, and it is supply and demand. Okay, I, I, I hear you. I, I hear you, Eric. Unfortunately, you're wrong, right? Supply and demand is a real thing. I don't, I'm not going to say you're wrong about supply and demand. But it's, you're wrong about it. it. has to be that way. Anyway, we are right up against the hour. And I, need, I want to ask you one more time, folks, to please support Politics Done Right. How can you do that? Go to politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. Politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. Know that all you will ever get from us is the truth. Know that you have your voice. We interview our own as well. As, as Carl Cox and Bruce Pollard can tell you, those are the two I see online that have been in, in, interviewed. Sometime I am pretty sure Eric Hayes will come on as well as Alistair Waters. So anyway, folks, please, please, please remember, support Politics on Right, politicsonright.com slash PayPal, or you can find an all-encompassing link at politicsonright.com slash support. Politicsonright.com slash support. Folks, my name is Egberto Willies, this is Politics Done Right, and you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Oh. 
we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.